Hello, I'm Andrew McNeil with North Dog Observatory. Today we're going to learn how to polar align a fork mounted telescope. The first thing that we need to do is we have to set up the tripod to be um, pointing to the north and also to be at the right declination for where you live. For example, uh, North Dog Observatory here we are at 55 degrees 18 minutes north latitude and so that's the declination that I need to set on my wedge in order to be in a, a really good starting position for, for polar alignment. With a fork mounted telescope there are two ways to align it. There's called an alt as method and there's a polar alignment uh, method. The, the, first, the first one, the alt as alignment um, has the fork sitting in a straight up and down position and this is fine for casual observing for example if you're going to go to a star party or somebody brings out a telescope uh, to the cottage or something you can set it up very quickly align it very quickly and be observing in minutes it's very good for uh, doing visual observation but not so good for doing astrophotography or something that requires a really high degree of precision and that's where the polar alignment comes in so uh, again, back to our wedge, we've set up our wedge roughly to be pointing to uh, true north and, and also pointing at our de declination for where we are. Um, and so the next thing to do is to set up our telescope so that it's in polar home position before we start our actual alignment procedure. Uh, it's, it's important to note that in Mead's manual, in the appendix where it says how to do this, they explain that you need to do, you need to do certain steps and one of them being the, the polar home position. And on the next page, the figure that they give is a telescope to set up in this position with the optical tube assembly pointing in this direction. Um, it can be very confusing to somebody that's used to a German equatorial mount and uh, or somebody that's never done it before and it can be very frustrating and that's why I've done this video. What I found out, thank the stars for the internet, um, I was able to dig out and Google and, and watch videos and see how other guys did it and uh, came up with, with a method for my telescope that works very well using uh, an agglomeration of the other methods that I've found. The internet is an invaluable tool for learning how to do anything, uh, especially a really a technical field like astronomy. Uh, with my Mead RCX 400, which this is, a Richie Kretchen is um, a, an offshoot of uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It's just a specialized type of telescope and it reflects instead of, instead of having lenses on both ends, it's only got a lens where your eye looks through, everything else is done with mirrors. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to teach you how to do this in uh, a few very simple steps. And uh, here we go. So on our Mead controller, uh, once you have your telescope turned on and, and the mount's gone through its little dance and whatnot, we're ready to actually do um, a precise polar alignment. Um, it's, a, it's important to note that unless you're going to be doing some really high grade astrophotography, don't knock yourself out on getting it perfectly polar aligned. Um, close is, is real good, with a, especially with a big eyepiece. You start with a big one, you can see something very close to your field of view, tune it in, get a smaller eyepiece, tune it in, and you can see some really good stuff out there without killing yourself trying to get it set up. Boy, oh, everybody hates that. Um, so anyway, to get this one set up, using my controller, um, I need to set my optical tube assembly to be in, in polar position, which would, be, which would be 90 degrees, having it straight out the top of my, of my forks. So I use my controller to do that, and I just move my telescope, my optical tube, up until it reads 90 degrees. It's important to note that once it gets close, you can stop, change the speed, and, and do fine tuning until you get it to read 90 degrees, zero, 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 zero. You would read that up in this screen right here. Um, to get to this screen right here, push and hold down the mode button for a couple or three seconds and do that until that screen comes up. And what you're going to get is you're going to get one called uh, RA and the other one called DEC with some numbers beside them. RA is right ascension, which is this direction. And DEC is declination, which is this direction. So what you want to do is you want to set the DEC or the declination to be at 90 degrees. Once you get it to that point right there, you're going to be very, very close. So at, with my telescope, when, when it's set, when this telescope is set in polar home position, as a matter of fact, the eyepiece is underneath. It makes it a little bit difficult to operate, um, but you know, c'est la vie. 
And so what I do is I set it down in, into, into that close to polar home position. And I go down and I look through my finder scope and using the controls, the knobs on my, on my wedge, my equatorial wedge, until the Polaris is centered in the center of my finder scope. Now Polaris isn't exactly at, at Celestial North, but it's very, very close so it's a good spot to start. Celestial North is a point where if you were to make a straight line from the South Pole to the North Pole and straight up on through to infinity, that would be Celestial North. The Celestial North Pole, if you were, if you were to north through those two points. So now we want to get our telescope to be set at Celestial North because it's not right now, it's, it's set at Polaris. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to make it so that when we slew our scope through right ascension that the stars uh, wheel about a central spot in our eyepiece. So we set our eyepiece up and we look through our eyepiece and we go back and forth if, the, if there's not one central spot where all the stars go around, they, instead they're going across your field of view, then you have, to move, you have to move your optical tube until it's actually able to do that. So using this control again, move your, move your optical tube up or down, use the fine control. And at the same time as you're moving it incrementally, go back and forth like such until that central spot with the stars wheeling around it is actually centered in your eyepiece. If it's a little bit off to the left and the right, use the knobs on your equatorial wedge to move your equatorial wedge in, this, in the, whichever direction it needs to be until it's centered in your eyepiece. Once that's done, then you've achieved polar, um, polar alignment. Now you want to align to some stars in order to be able to find some stuff. So you have 90 set here, and what you want to do is, this one is right ascension. Right ascension is at the top of the menu on your screen on this meet control. You want to set your right ascension to be at zero degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds. So you get it close by, by moving it over as such, and then lock it down, and using your control, move it left or right until you hit zero degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds. Now your telescope is ready to align. It's set up at zero degrees, and at that point it's pointing perfectly north, and it's set at 90 degrees, and at that point it's set perfectly at the declination where you live at, which would be your north latitude. At that point, we tell it that we want to do some alignment on it. In this control, it's, it has a, um, on the top, it says select item, and then you, there's a scroll button, and you just scroll until you hit set up. The first one there is a line, you tell it yes. This type of alignment that we're going to do on this particular scope is called uh, a one star alignment. It's actually, uh, it's a lie face uh, term because there's, they use two stars, but this telescope picks one arbitrarily every time, which is Polaris, and the other one is the one that we actually align on. So once we're ready to align it, because we've set our, we've set our, our declination right, and we've set our, our, our um, east and west to be perfectly at north so now our telescope is ready to align and it's going to want to align on Polaris so what it's going to do is once once we get it into a one star alignment and press enter it's going to go through the instructions it's going to say polar align and then it's going to go through the instructions scrolling at the bottom of the screen and it's going to kind of like like give you a really terse interpretation of what I've just given you um, once you once you have it all set up like this just go ahead and press enter, you don't have to follow their instructions. Their instructions are really vague anyway. It takes a GPS fix, it takes a couple of seconds. Just verifies that your, that your location is in north latitude is where it's supposed to be, your time, uh, which is a very important factor of course. Once it sets that, then the telescope does what's called the Mead Mambo, where it actually wants to do its alignment slews. The first alignment that it does, again, is on Polaris. And this alignment requires that we do not use this box. Once the telescope is ready, the box is going to say um, align on Polaris using the equatorial wedge, not the controls. So we do not use this box. We use the controls on our, on our wedge, which on mine are a couple of knobs. 
and we move it whichever directions we need to move the telescope until the finder scope is on Polaris and then incrementally more fine um, depending on, on the, your desire for accuracy you will move your equatorial wedge until Polaris is centered in the middle of your eyepiece once it is you touch as your screwdriver or your allen wrench or whatever you need to use your tool to tighten your equatorial wedge um, tightening screws go through your entire wedge tighten everything down tight 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 and then double check always double check as you're through your tightening process to make sure that your scope hasn't actually moved off of Polaris in either of, of your your positions your finer scope or your eyepiece once you're all set up in that position then take up your control again and I press enter because at that point it's going to take a fix calculate and decide which star to use as an alignment star for the actual scope itself so that's what it's doing now in my case because of the time of the day uh, and, and my my latitude it's going to pick Arcturus today tonight is probably going to pick Vega which is up in, in the zenith and then I'll have to probably pick something else Arcturus will be gone by that point Once it's set close to, to whatever star it's decided to use as its, as its alignment star, then you need to use your controller to adjust your telescope slew in order to center that bright star in your eyepiece. One of the things about it is that sometimes you don't know the night sky as well as, as you think you should in order to use an instrument of, of this class, but that's not true. Um, they make it very, very simple by picking uh, alignment stars that are generally the brightest star in that sector of space. So in this case, when that telescope is pointing there, it's not going to be pointing exactly at Arcturus, but it's going to be very close. From there, I can use my control, and using the buttons on my control to slew my scope in whichever direction. I look through first my finder scope and then my eyepiece um, in varying degrees of accuracy until it's until Arcturus or whichever is the bright guy or bright star is centered in my eyepiece. And then once it's centered, then I simply press enter. If it's succeeded, then it's going to give you a, a, an indication on this particular type of of uh, of controller it says align successful and then it goes over into um, a menu mode where you can pick like say tonight's best for example um, and if you've done it properly then just go through tonight's best and it'll look and it'll say okay well say for example this one says go to Mars so just press go to if you've done everything properly during uh, each course of what you needed to do then Mars should be pointed almost, almost centered into your scope, if not centered. Um, as I said, the more precise you do your job uh, from beginning to end, the more, the more precise is going to be uh, the scope in, in this position here. Um, don't knock yourself out on getting too precise because use a big eyepiece and move your way down to begin with. Um, that, that'll keep your observing uh, good times and not all set up and, and very little observing and uh, have fun out there. I hope you have clear skies and I hope that this tutorial has helped you in uh, the methods and ways to uh, polar align a fork mounted telescope. I'm Andrew McNeil, North Dog Observatory.